In this video, we're going to be looking at model based test automation for Microfocus UFT so you can rapidly create maintainable test automation for virtually any environment. Now, what we're going to be doing in this video is firstly, we're going to be importing a UFT object repository into Test Modeler. We're then going to be modeling the system, and while we're doing that, we'll be overlaying automation and test data scenarios. We could go off and look up external data, which you can see in one of our existing videos linked below. Once we've modeled the system and overlaid our automation, we can export a coverage focused set of automation scripts back into UFT. Finally, we'll be running our coverage focused automation scripts against the system under test, which in this case is going to be a web based platform, but it could just as easily be a mobile based app or a fit client application or some kind of ERP like SAP. So let's jump in and take a look at the demo. The system we're going to be testing in this demo is just a little e commerce system where we have various sign-in screens and also we can go through and make various different orders through our system. Now, what we've done in UFT is we've built out a little object repository here, which can be constructed from recordings of activity, or you can go into the UFT object spy and start picking out elements on a page to include. Once you've built up this repository, what you essentially get is a repository of objects or the pages in this case, because we're dealing with a web UI. And within each page, you have the different objects that were interacted with and scanned, along with the associated identifiers to extract this object on the page. So it's a nice way for us to build up an object repository of all the actions available that we want to automate. Inside Test Modeler, we have a full synchronization engine to bring in and synchronize with the UFT object repository. So we've done that synchronization process here and you'll see all of those objects available. And we can go into some of these. So let's take a look at the checkout and you'll see the different objects we've got. And within each object, we have the different actions we can perform on it. So the city field in the checkout, we could click, we could assert it exists, we could right click, or we could set some value in there as this is some kind of input box. So at this point, we've got our whole object repository imported into Test Modeler. Now what we want to do is use this object repository and consume it to create some very rich sets of test automation. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to start modeling a checkout process. Now the first thing we need to do when we start any model is add a start block. And then what we're going to do is we'll come into the modules panel on the right hand side and we'll open up to the objects we just scanned. We're going to be focusing exclusively on the checkout process. Now the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go through, we're going to enter a city. If we enter a positive city, what we're going to do is enter a postcode. If we enter a positive postcode, what we're then going to do is enter in the street address. So we'll select the street here, put that in. Now, what you'll see here is as I was going through adding these objects in, it was splitting them out for me into the different equivalence classes for each value, my cities, my postcodes, etc. Now, what's actually happened here is we have a little data dictionary in the background of common data components, which is fully extendable. And what we'll see here is that it's not managed to find a data component for a street. Now, what we could do is come in here and create a new rule and specify the exact equivalence classes for that. Now, I know that we do have a rule here called address, so I'm just gonna select that, bring it in, and we'll see that's been componentized for us again. Now, the final one we're gonna do here is set the telephone. And then finally, what we will do is we will use a fixed shipping address. So we'll just click on the fixed one here. Finally, if all is successful, we're going to click the next button to take us to the next page. Now, if we go through this top half of the process, we're going to be successful. If we enter negative data in here, we're going to end up in some kind of error state. So we're just going to go back here and connect all of these up. As so we'll do a quick little relayout. And what you'll see here is that we've got a full model, which has test data overlaid here. 
and you'll see in some cases it has static data defined so here we're dealing with a city variable but also it's actually had the intelligence here to map it to one of our many data expressions for generating synthetic data so you'll see in here the various functions for generating financials names phone numbers dates etc etc here it knows we're interacting with a city field so it's generated a random value here for a city you'll also see is that it's overlaid the automation actions as we've come through here with our actions which exist in our object repository in UFT now all I have to do is come in here hit the generate button and what that will do for me is generate a set of coverage focused test cases across my application so here we have the minimum number of test cases which cover every single process decision point inside our checkout screen now in the world of the enterprise and especially within ERP applications you'll find that there are processes that exist that have many steps involved like some kind of procurement process now the way we handle that in test modeler is you can come in and you will basically split that down into very small components so you may build a model for every single step within that process once you've constructed that model it becomes a reusable asset which can be embedded inside a much bigger end-to-end -end process so what we've done here is we've just embedded a checkout process on the right hand side here as so but we've also added another process in here to go through and add an item to the shopping cart and then before that perform a login so we've created a much richer and much bigger end-to-end -end scenario just like before all I need to do is come in hit the generate button here and that will generate a coverage focus set of automated tests for me and we'll see as I'm flicking through here the different deviations and the different journeys these are testing through our order process now at the same time as doing this what happened was it created a set of UFT automated scripts and what we'll see now is we're back inside um, UFT and on the left hand side we have the scripts that were generated as part of that process so we'll see all the tests here we're just inside the positive scenario here which was placing an order and what we can now do is we can go through and we can execute these tests so we'll just come in hit the run button here just to see this one run through so what we'll see here is we're going through the login process we're then making an order we're then going through the checkout process here and then finally to place the order for us and we'll see here our test has been successful now within the software industry we've moved over to the world of agile where we're moving much much faster and we're releasing much more often now with that there's this particular pain point where every time a change request happens we have to maintain our test cases in the world of model based testing all we need to do is come into our models and update our models to reflect that change so if we have some kind of new process that happens we would come in here and adjust our models to reflect those changes then all we need to do is come in regenerate our tests and re-export these back into our UFT environment for execution so you need to have a mind shift that our automation scripts are throwaway assets every time we do a new release we're going to regenerate those scripts to generate a new up-to-date set of test automation to enable us to move much faster and keep up with the rate of change faced in our software development with test modeler you can use your existing object repository you have in UFT which could have been created from recordings or scanned objects you can rapidly create automated models covering both positive and negative scenarios in minutes using our fast model builder you can use these models to then generate optimal coverage focused automated test cases to be executed in UFT and also integrated into your continuous integration environment with model based testing you can easily maintain your test automation all you need to do is keep your models up to date and then the automation is updated for free whenever we do a new generate you can also use test modelers to overlay rich sets of synthetic data and also go into back-end databases and systems to find or make the right data at the right time in the right place to support your automation scripts we have a nice video available which shows this in UFT you can follow the link in the YouTube video below 
Thanks for watching this video. Sign up to testmodeler.io to start your free trial today.